ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नमस्ते so let's continue with the fourth adhikarana of brahma sutra in this sutra shankara's commentary is extremely important because he defines what is knowledge of brahman the whole thrust of the brahma sutra is this knowledge so what kind of knowledge is it does it come about through meditation through study through sacrifice what generates knowledge of brahman first of all and what is its effect so let's take up where we left off in the last episode and the removal of false ignorance follows from the knowledge of the unity of the individual self and brahman but this knowledge of the unity of the self and brahman is not a kind of meditation called sampad as in the mind is certainly infinite and the vishva devas are infinite through this meditation one wins an infinite world brihadaranyakopanishad 319 nor is it a form of meditation called adhyasa as in one should meditate thus the mind is brahman chandogya 3181 and the instruction is the sun is brahman chandogya upanishad 3191 where the idea of brahman is superimposed on the mind the sun etc nor is it a meditation based on some special activity as in air is certainly the place of merger the vital force is certainly the place of merger chandogya upanishad 4 3 1 through 4 nor is it a kind of purification of some factor in some vedic rite as for instance the act of looking at the oblation by the sacrificer's wife for its purification if the knowledge of the unity of the self and brahman is accepted as a kind of sampad etc then it will flout the ascertainable meaning of all the words occurring in such sentences and establishing the unity of the self and brahman as that thou art chandogya 687 i am brahman brihadaranyaka 1410 This self is Brahman, Brihadaranyaka 2519. Besides, thereby will be set at naught such sentences as, The knots of the heart are untied and all doubts are resolved, Mundakopanishat 228, in which one hears of the result of knowledge consisting in the cessation of nescience. Furthermore, from the point of view of sampad etc such sentences as one who knows brahman becomes brahman mundakopanishad 329 which speak of unity with brahman cannot be fully justified therefore the knowledge of the unity of the self and brahman is not a kind of sampad or anything of that sort hence the knowledge of brahman is not dependent on human action first of all we have to understand that there are basically two types of knowledge knowledge that comes about through some action which is necessarily of the external features of something this is called tatashta lakshana and knowledge which is intrinsic to the thing itself simply by experiencing its nature and this is called svarupa lakshana so when we speak about the unity of brahman 
and the self. This does not mean there is some process that creates this knowledge. This knowledge is not the result of any kind of work. Why is that? For Brahman itself is never the object of any process, even a process of consciousness. So then what is it? Well, it's Swarupa Lakshana. It's knowledge due to the qualities of the thing itself. Now, that implies the fact that Brahman is pre-existing and that the unity of the self and Brahman is also pre-existing. It does not come into being as the result of any work. It is Swarupa Lakshana, the very nature of the way things are. And Shankara goes on to enlarge this concept. On what does it depend, then? It is dependent on the thing itself, as in the case of the knowledge of a thing got through such valid means as direct perception. By no stretch of imagination can such a Brahman or its knowledge be brought into contact with the work. Nor can it be held that Brahman has some association with work by virtue of its being the object of the act of knowing. For in the text, it is different from the known and also different from the unknown. Kain Upanishad 1.4 As also in the text, through what should one know that owing to which all this is known? Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 2.4.14 Brahman is denied to be an object of the act of knowing. So also there is the denial of its being the object of the act of meditation. For in the text, that which is not uttered by speech, that by which speech is revealed, it is first declared that Brahman is not an object, and then it is said, Know that alone to be Brahman, and not what people worship as an object. Brahman is never an object. Why? Because Brahman is the subject, the seer, the knower, the self. And because Brahman is always so, it is always the self. It is never an object of anything, even knowledge. So the knowledge of Brahman is inseparable from self-knowledge, knowledge of being. If you ask any person, do you exist? They're going to say, yes, of course I exist. But then you can stump them and say, well, how do you know? that you exist. And he'll probably say something about the body or the mind, but that's not the actual proof that they exist. The actual proof of one's existence is the a priori knowledge that I am. Isn't it? Everybody knows that they exist, but how do they know? through self-knowledge, knowledge of the self by the self, is intrinsic to the self. Therefore, Brahman is never the object of any process of knowledge, including meditation, sacrifice, study, logic, etc., etc., Not only that, there can never be any experimental proof of the existence of Brahman, because Brahman is never the object of any kind of measuring instrument, what to speak of the senses. Therefore, Brahman is always eternally and ineluctably subjective. It is that by which everything is known. <laughs> And because of this, it is also the source of bliss. Try to understand. 
Brahman is Sat Chit Ananda, unconditional existence as the subject, the self, eternal knowledge, complete and full knowledge of everything, pure consciousness of consciousness, and Ananda, unlimited bliss. And the way to experience this for yourself is simply to look at it, ignoring all the tatashta lakshana, uh, the external characteristics, the uh, visible and uh, sensible qualities, such as the body and the mind, sense perceptions, phenomena, and so forth and simply contemplate the self as itself, alone. You will find that it is complete, purnam. It contains everything. It is everything. It knows everything. And it has unlimited subjective bliss. Without this bliss, the Upanishads say, no one could exist even for a moment. Why? What is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of existence, if not bliss? Simply knowledge and being itself, I mean, they're already wonderful, but they are not sufficient without this unlimited, unconditioned, causeless bliss. Simply by the nature of Brahman, simply by the nature of the self, one experiences this bliss every moment. But because we look for the self, we look for happiness, we look for knowledge and so on, to so many other things, so many objects like the mind and thoughts, like the body and the senses, so on and so forth, we miss it. We see only the reflection of the being of Brahman in the being of the world. We see only the reflection of the knowledge of Brahman in the knowledge of external objects. And we see only the reflection of the bliss of Brahman in the enjoyment of the qualities of the external objects. Therefore, None of these things can reveal Brahman by any process of work, of doing. It is simply a recognition of what already is our nature, our being. Being, awareness, and bliss. This is Brahman. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.